Though the dark is overwhelming and the brightest lights grow dim, though the word of God is trampled on by foolish men, though the wicked never stumble and abound in every place, we will all be humbled when we see. demons we've been fighting, those without and those within, will be underneath our feet to never rise again. All our sins will be behind us through the blood of Christ erased, and we'll taste your kindness when we see. Yeah. 
much of the secrets of the hearts of men. Here I surrender. Secrets of the hearts of men. Here I surrender and humbly repent. You've conquered my soul. Your grace from beginning. 
hope remains you will rescue anyone who calls upon your name and you will save whom you will save faithful love won't be denied Christ has overcome the grave and for our sins he died and when he comes back his glory will shine It's your grace from beginning to the end. It's your grace we will never comprehend. It's your grace from beginning to the end. It's your grace. Scorned by the ones he came to save, to 
members of staff and students back at school, and welcome to the final assembly for the Year 12 class of 2020. I'd li like to ask John O'Morrison and Takara Delmidge to give the acknowledgement to country. We would like to acknowledge that we meet today on traditional lands of the Gamilaroi people. We recognise their continuing connection to this land and pay our respects to the elders past and present. We extend that respect to any Aboriginal people here present today. We acknowledge that we're all made in the image of God and regardless of race or creed, we seek to live together to the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, welcome again to the very unusual Year 12 Final Assembly. Normally at this point in time, Year 12 would enter the pack for their final hurrah. Everyone would clap. I would probably cry. And the parents would hold their breath as their child walks up onto the, sta onto the stage. But not today. Instead, this morning, we drove the bus up Raywood Drive and all the students and teachers from K-11 lined up to wave goodbye. It was an unusual thing to do, but it was a great way to be able to say goodbye for one last time. Unfortunately, parents, we weren't able to drive past all of your houses, but we trust that you'll be able to enjoy the assembly from your lounge rooms at home. Despite the unusual circumstances, it is great to meet together to celebrate the culmination of 13 years of schooling and mark what is a very significant chapter of the students' lives. Only one year ago, the students in front of me watched the class of 2019 graduate and looked at the year ahead with slight fear and dread. Little did you know. If I could have told you about the things that would, you would experience this year, you would have thought I was crazy. Coronavirus has certainly caused much sadness, anxiety and heartache in the community. And for year 12, it has been a difficult year. Interestingly, at the start of the year, we did quite a few Bible studies looking at perspectives and priorities and what is really important in life. And if there has been a positive to COVID, it is that it has helped us to bring perspectives and priorities into focus. It has helped us to see that whilst the HSC is important, in the scheme of things, it's not the be all and end all. This group has worked really hard at looking out for each other and their teachers. As I've said to them on more than one occasion, to quote Bette Midler, they have often been the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> more importantly, these difficult times have encouraged many of the students to make Jesus the main priority in their lives and put their trust in him because he is the one who is in control of all things, including disease. For those of you who are watching this stream as you look on at year 12, there'll be a mixture of emotions. For some of the teachers and parents, pure relief. They've finally made it to the end. I think particularly here of the Beemans, who, if you take out the weekends and the holidays, have had a child in either year 11 or 12 for 2,416 consecutive days. Luke graduated in 2010, Lockie 2012, Jared 2014, Caleb 2016, Hayden 2018, and now Hannah in 2020. To the Beemans, thank you for helping me pay my bills over all these years. <laughs> Some of the parents might feel sadness as they wonder where the time has gone and realise that their ch child may soon be leaving home. The Morrisons are one family who, with Jono, have come to the end of 20 years of schooling with their four children at Carinya, Tamworth and Gunnada. That equals about 10,000 lunches that have been packed and put in bags over the years. Mind you, it wouldn't have been quite so many lunches if Jono hadn't repeated prep. <laughs> For a lot of parents and teachers, this has been quite an emotional morning and week. Year 12, we really appreciate the significant positive impact that you have collectively had as a year group. It's also a happy time as we reflect on this group's past 13 years of schooling. We can clearly see God's goodness in so many ways. We can reflect on the way Christ has blessed each of them in enabling them not only to finish their schooling, 
but to grow and change from the small children that they were in kindergarten to the assured young men and women that they are today. As they leave Karina, they will very much remain in our thoughts and our prayers as they embark on the next stage in their lives, which the Lord has already prepared for them. Earlier last week, Noah Maxwell and Stella Walk put together a farewell message that we'll now watch together. We really like being in the K-12 school. Some of our experiences are the same. We will have Christian teachers who love to teach us the Bible in the mornings. We will have to work faithfully to the best of our abilities. We get to keep our friendships all the way through from kindy to year 12 and go to the same school as our siblings. After you leave, we will miss you, even though you have broken a lot of things. Well, Isaac Lewison has broken a few things, like the time when he smashed the pack window with a soccer ball and when he bit Lillian's Chromebook and broke it. Ella Fotheringham has broken a considerable amount of bones. Her arm, her foot, her wrist three times, her collarbone, and the list goes on, but we don't have time to finish it now. Not only did they break things, in this instant they broke a rule. Two boys who felt hungry resourcefully ordered the Domino's online pizza from their Chromebooks during school hours and got it delivered to the office. There were only two problems with this. One, they didn't have permission, and more importantly, they had no money. So, Mr Davis ended up paying for the pizza, and the two boys went hungry. This whole year has been a little bit broken, with many events usually organised by Year 12 just unable to take place due to COVID-19. However, the lunchtime netball and soccer competitions have been a highlight. Thank you, Year 12, for competing in them and showing us how to really play. We are also thankful that even though some things are broken, we serve a good God who makes all things new, who will restore our broken, sinful world and our broken relationship with him. We hope that you continue to follow Jesus as your King and Saviour and that you will have a good relationship with others. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We hope you remember this as you leave school. Jacob Fawkes, Ellie Cook and Andrew Clark have also put together a video message on behalf of Senior School. wanted to record some thoughts and well wishes for you as a formal farewell from senior school. You have been around for a while now and you will clearly leave both a lasting impression and a hole in the school as you finish up. We know that 2020 has been a really rough year. It must be especially hard for you as you get ready for exams. It's great that God is good and he's in charge in the same way that he is the boss of COVID-19. He also has you and your exams in his hands. While you haven't had all the opportunities to lead out front like you might have expected, You've led in lots of other ways. You have served and cared for others through the way you've approached your learning. You've looked out for younger students and supported older ones. You have worked hard on your schoolwork and been faithful to assessments and projects. The major works and performances that you have done show our community the gifts and skills that God has given you. We know that it has been hard knowing that they can't be on display and perform like they have been in the past, but you still worked hard and got them done. You still worked hard and made the, every minute count. Year 11 is looking forward to a term of extra space in senior study. And Year 10 is anticipating moving in next year. We pray that you'll work hard for your exams and do your best. We know that this honours Jesus, but it will also feel great to know that you've made it to the end and done a great job. We can't wait to hear what you're up to next year and look forward to catching up when we can. We hope you'll use your gifts and skills to serve King Jesus and others as you make plans for the future. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In your ways, remember him. And he will make your path straight. Farewell from senior school. Now we come to the moment that the teachers back at school are probably a little bit nervous about. I'd like to invite Sophie Button and Isaac Learson who will respond on behalf of Year 12. Good morning, Mr. Jones, our fellow classmates, students and teachers back at school, and to all those on couches at home. Welcome to the Year 12 Final Assembly of 2020. Today, we have been given the honour of speaking to you on behalf of Year 12 in this mashup of a graduation ceremony and a TV show. 
As custom, we have a list of thanks to all that have made our memories at Corinna permanent, and the subclause of thanks to those who have literally kept us alive through the global pandemic of COVID-19. But before all that, we think that it is appropriate to show our gratitude towards the school's ethos and Christian foundations for blessing our schooling. In every class and throughout every global pandemic, Jesus and his grace has led us, led us through it all, guiding us from our first day at Corinna and every swimming carnival, exam, sports day and assessment task since, our school has pointed us to Jesus and reminded us to stay faithful and thankful in all that we do, so that now we sit in our final assembly and see that all the Bible studies, pastoral cares, and lessons that our school has gifted us with have moulded us into the people we are today. As people who are ready to move on to the next phase of life, we know that all that we do is from Christ and for him. Through persistent teaching of his word, our teachers armed us with what King Solomon tells us in Ecclesiastics 1 verse 2. Life is no more than vapour in the air. After all, what to be gained from our toils under the sun? We know that we can find meaning and strength through Jesus Christ. And as our graduating class moves forward with these lessons in mind, we would like to share a list of appreciation and gratitude. First, with a thank you to our parents, guardians and families sitting at home. You have supported our learning and enhanced our education by gifting us the opportunity to attend this great school. Sometimes we forget we are teachers other than our HSC teachers. But as we finish schooling, we ask schooling, we recall all our carefree times in our junior and senior school classrooms. So to our teachers of old, thank you for prepping us with the joys and lessons that led us to the door of our final year. We would also like to thank the rest of the school staff, to the receptionists for finding our class when we couldn't, to the sick bay staff for having red skins at the ready, to the librarians for reminding us of the book we forgot to return in year two, and to Mr. Bajima for fixing all the Chromebooks we broke in our bag. We are appreciative of those who maintained our health during this global pandemic. To the men in blue who persistently spray and wiped every doorknob and touched all service, yes, we saw your eye rolls. To the cleaners who through long, tedious hours in the senior study kitchen made it safe for us to make teas and hot chocolates in our free periods. It's not spoiling us, it was necessary to study. And to all those who zapped us on the forehead when we were entering the school, especially when rugged up for our early morning classes, don't worry, we didn't want to be there either. Some of the most impactful people, of course, were our HSC teachers who guided us over this final hurdle and through this global pandemic. We decided to let them speak for themselves and as such, we have an award unique to each of our HSC teachers. Usually at Corinna, we don't have awards, but this year has been a little bit different for all of us and so we have the flexibility to change things up a bit. We will do this by commencing the first non-award award ceremony. Our first non-award award goes to Mr. Hutchison and Miss Porter, who we started every day with in partial care. As the, as the deserving recipients of the Know It All Award, Miss Porter perfectly summed up their role with her quote of the year being, why are you asking us? We know nothing around here. <laughs> Even without knowing everything, your Bible lessons and continual support throughout the year have been fundamental to us. Named after its recipient, there was a particular non-award award for teaching common sense and real life skills to 18 year olds. We awarded Mr. Lamrock with the Lamrock Life Lessons Award for always showing that practicality is a necessity. For Mr. Norton, it was obvious that he deserved the Pendulum Award for constantly swinging between, this is probably a terrible idea, but like, what if? And if it's hard, give up and never try again. <laughs> the science faculty was diverse in its range of non-award awards. First, Mrs. McDonald with the Anti-Aging Award for putting up with Robbie and Jono since year seven and not changing a bit. Then Miss Burns won the Single File Award for having Robbie and Jono and Archie and keeping them in line. Mrs. Harvey and Mrs. Schwenke are clearly commendable for the Hard Worker Award. We know that having a one to three student attendance rate is very difficult to maintain. Even then, Mrs. Harvey's class always managed to get marks that she knew, and I quote, they wouldn't be happy with. An important non-award award goes to those teachers who got sick of us and hence left for maternity leave. We named this the Toilet Paper Award for running out when you need me most. To Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Carter, Pregnancy is not a viable excuse for a holiday. Thanks, anyways. <laughs> to the lovely Mrs. Jarrett, Mrs. Sharrick, and Mrs. Batley. As a unit, they showed much compassion and reassurance through the tribulations of this global pandemic. We not award you with the, I know last time I told you not to hand it in late, but this time I let you hand it in late because you know everything going on, award. <laughs> Most fitting for Mr. Hamstead was the Bermuda Triangle Award with a description of the desk where things go in but never come out the same, we know this is for him. 
Though we forgive you, Mr. Hampstead. We know you get paid anyway, even if it's just to turn us into nimble mountain goats. Keeping with the theme of English teachers, we hope Mrs. Cottrell will accept the self-proclaimed Redhead Award for stating it's because I'm a redhead every lesson. Not awarding the maths faculty was easy and begins with Miss Stace, winner of the Early Bird Award, for having morning classes every morning, even with the unforeseen circumstances that made her class consistently half an hour late. Mr. Dean achieved great heights with the High Hopes Award for believing in his class even when they didn't. And concluding the maths teachers, Mr. Mack, please accept the Persistence Award for teaching a class that, quote, made a fool out of you with that test. Which leads us to Mr. Gosson and his hard-earned Contemporary History Award for always making sure that we knew this is all live, this is all happening today. <laughs> Even if it's just when you're making stuff up about the Spartans or menacingly raising your eyebrows at your students. For the teachers of agriculture and Japanese, the non-awards were a bit obscure. Mr. Knott, we non-award you with the Baby's Bottom Award for being the smoothest during global pandemic. Mrs. Woods receives the Squirrel Award for substituting coffee for sleep during these times, hence your never-ending energy. Mr. Maxwell, you obviously are non-awarded with the How Are You Even Still Alive Award for informing the class of a new personal injury every lesson. How many times can you break the same phalange, you piece of work? <laughs> Mr. Weeks, you get the pretty self-explanatory Archie Award for your own slogan, Archie, stop it. Mrs. Davis, we would like to non-award you with the Life Award for teaching us that there is more to life than the HSC. We would also like to thank you for reminding us that your door is always open, even if no one knows where your office is. <laughs> and finally, to Mr. Davis, we give you the Band-Aid Award. Mr. Davis's consistency with dealing with all our issues, even if they are too big, is what he gave in this title. It is probably through being, and I quote, the wind beneath his wings, that we became his, and I quote, favourite year group so far, not knowing how, and I quote, year 11 are going to be as good as us. For the men behind the scenes, Mr Weary, we thank you for always holding the door open, figuratively and literally, over the years. And to our leader, Mr Jones, the backbone of this chaotic year, thank you for smoothing out all of the global pandemic uncertainties. In all seriousness, though, and with complete honesty, we are thankful to each and every one of you, and to our teachers who guided us over every hurdle. We are deeply appreciative. We have come to the end of 14 years of schooling, and though we might have seen ourselves going out with a bit of a bang, our graduation year 2020 has instead let us free with a bit of a whimper. But that's okay, because in the opening of the close, we find ourselves beginning our next journey. And as we leave behind our pulled up socks and scratchy skirt days, we wish the best for our successor year 12s and the rest of the students. Make the most of all that our school offers. We would like to leave you with a quote from 1 Peter 5 verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. This is a great reminder for us during all times, but particularly in a year that has been so uncertain. We will now call upon Ella Fotheringham and Georgia Vanderoff to present the school with a gift on behalf of year 12. Uh, we would like to ask Mr. Jones to come up. So, on behalf of Year 12 2020, we have decided, decided to present the school with a few things. Firstly, a native tuckaroo tree to be planted in front of kindergarten, as well as two ornamental pears to be planted elsewhere in the school. We were very blessed to also have a plaque donated to us by Steve and his wife from Tamworth Engraving, to be placed with the Takaru tree, containing a Bible verse which we believe represents the strong foundation of Corinna's ethos. As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Colossians 2, 6-7. Additionally, one of our art students, Lillian Chin, has designed a, start, a sign to put up in some of our primary school classrooms with the Bible verse Joshua 1, 9 which has been especially comforting, comforting to us during this unpredictable year. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord our God is with you wherever you go. These gifts are only small in comparison to the many life, personal and academic skills that we have received over the past years of our schooling. We are especially thankful for all the support we have received during our HSC HSC year from the whole school community and we hope that these small gifts can be enjoyed now and for many years to come.
Thank you. Well, um, on behalf of the school, thank you very much, kids. Uh, I look forward to seeing this tree grow and bear fruit, as I'm sure all of you guys will as well. So thank you very much. Sophie, Isaac, Ella and Georgia. Uh, look, maybe we need to do one more non-award, and that might be for Sophie and Isaac. It's the Looking for Sympathy Award by making 15 references to the pandemic in one speech. <laughs> Hannah Beeman and Maddie Singh have spent hours putting together a video montage of Year 12 from over the years, which I'm sure everyone back at school and particularly the parents will enjoy watching. spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me
I don't know how you're going, parents at home. That nearly tipped me over the edge. Back in 2008, the current year 12 were in kindergarten. Archie Crofts wasn't quite as tall. Chelsea was already preparing HSC responses to be marked by the kindergarten teachers. <laughs> Robbie's only dream was to one day grow a Mexican moustache. One of the great things about being a K-12 school is watching students grow and change over time. It is a real shame that Kindy can't be with us today as they normally have a very big role to play in the final assembly. However, they have put together a presentation which contains a message to the current Year 12 students as they move to the next stage in their lives. Thanks, Kindergarten. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is in within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth burns. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thank you, Kindergarten. It's a great Bible verse for all of us, but particularly for Year 12 as they face the uncertainty of the next couple of months and beyond. God is our refuge and strength, no matter what happens now or in the future. Mr Jones will now speak to us. Well, thank you, Mr Davis. Well, Year 12... Parents and staff and students who are listening at home or at school, it is my great privilege to farewell the Year 12 class of 2020. What a great bunch of young, and young men and women we have here today. Well, we do meet under slightly strange circumstances, don't we? It's a bit of a bizarro year this year. And uh, despite the coronavirus, we're just very pleased that there are no zombies lurking outside the church at the moment. Well, it's great that we can at least meet, and it's great that we have the technology to be able to share together in this event. And I do thank Trinity Church for uh, providing this venue for us this morning. And as I think of the years ahead, I do wonder, year 11, what's it going to look like for you next year? or maybe kindergarten in 12 years' time, what is it going to look like for you? Well, days like this remind me a little bit of bushwalking. When I go hiking, I'll see a mountain in the distance, a few, few days' walk away, and each step I take brings me closer to the mountain, and yet the mountain doesn't seem to get that much closer. But by taking a step at a time, it actually helps us all enjoy the walk that much more and enjoy the things along the way. And Year 12, you are a group who enjoy the things along the way. Listening to you, uh, I spoke to some of you coming in this morning and I was kind of, you know, excited, you know, how excited are you guys, last day and everything. And uh, everyone responded in a bit of a similar way. Well, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sad. And uh, that's just a reflection that you're a group that enjoys the things, things along the way. Well, Year 12, you don't quite realise what this moment is like for your parents. For them, the mountain is well and truly here. Parents, you've watched your kids from their last day, their first day of school, to their last. You have watched them learn how to tie their shoelaces through to learning how to drive a car. 
although I heard this morning some drive better than others. <laughs> After a few short weeks, they will commence their HSC and then either start working or head off to university. Sunrise, sunset, swiftly flow the days. How quickly the years go and we are so pleased that we've been able to share them with you. And especially as Mr Davis mentioned earlier, some families that have been with us for such a long time. Well, the purpose of school is learning. It forges and shapes people through what happens in the classroom and in the playground, through camps, sport, singing, a whole range of different activities that change you in such a way that you will be equipped, better equipped, to contribute to society. Well, I haven't been on too many trips with this current Year 12 group. In fact, this year, no one's been away too much with any year group. But I can remember a few memories from the trips that I have been on. Year 5, Lynchwood Camp. I can remember rock hopping with you guys and trying to catch some lizards. I can remember your enthusiasm as we climbed over the granite boulders and went into the cave. And I can honestly say that you were one of the braver groups that I have ever taken you on. I've also been on some choir trips with some of you. Who's been on a choir trip with me? Yeah, a few kids. Cockatoo Island, all-time favourite. And seeing you step out and sing in public is a big thing. And once again, your bravery has been impressive. I took some of you to Fiji. And certainly for me, I saw the true colour of some, some of these kids while we were there. When they were tired and it was pouring with rain, when they had to sing in front of 75 strangers in the middle of absolutely nowhere, they were still smiling. They relished the opportunity to enjoy God's world and the people in it. Being able to smile when life is hard is a gift. Being able to enjoy opportunities that arise is a gift. Being able to say, how can I serve Jesus and other people above myself makes a world in difference in terms of how you see the world and how you see other people. So fix your eyes on the things that make a difference. When you get your priorities right, it makes a difference. We've had the uh, news reporters come out quite a few times lately because of COVID. And they've wanted to say something dramatic about what's happening with COVID, whether it's about the graduation or the finishing of school. But each time our kids have shown their character and they've said when asked, well, how has the COVID affected you? And they've gone, well, actually, it's not too bad. With the graduation, they asked uh, Leah and, and Lillian, how has the, grad how has the uh, COVID affected you and the, the idea of graduation? And Lillian was like, it's okay, I'm more concerned about other people than myself. It shows, despite the angle that the news reporter was trying to get from them, that our kids have got, you kids, have got your priorities right. Let me tell you a bit of a story that helps think about our perspectives. There was a rich Indian man and his son. They owned an extensive number of artworks that they kept inside their house. Outside of their house on the street lived a beggar. And this beggar would talk to the father and the son each morning when they came out of the house. And one morning, the beggar, he had actually drawn a portrait of the son. And they had all of these beautiful artworks inside. But the, the rich man, he actually took this portrait from the beggar. And unbeknownst to the beggar, he actually hung it in his house next to all of these other spectacular artworks. Time passed, and sadly, both the father and the son, uh, they died. And the beggar, he came back to visit the house, and he discovered that they were selling paintings, this exquisite uh, number of paintings inside of the house. So he went inside the house when the auction was being held, and the auctioneer announced that the first item for sale, and this is part of the rich man's will, was actually the painting that the beggar himself had painted of the son. The, the auctioneer asked for the bidding for this painting 
And because everybody else was after the, uh, the exquisite, beautiful paintings, not this one of uh, the son that the beggar had painted, the auctioneer looked around and the beggar put his hand into his pocket and uh, realised he had a, a few small coins. And so he bid on this picture. And the auctioneer looked around and he said, uh, going once, going twice, sold. And so the beggar was able to get this particular picture. Well, when the other people were ready to make a bid for all of the other beautiful paintings, the auctioneer said there was a second condition to the will. And he said, whoever won the bid for the painting of my son gets the whole collection of the paintings. Whoever got the son gets everything. Now, there are many things that as you go into the world that you will seek, things that might become a priority. Some of you might seek popularity, and with time, that'll pass. Some of you might seek money, and we just have to look at the lives of the rich and famous. It doesn't bring happiness. Some of you might seek material possessions, married life, children, the perfect job. And while all of these things are not bad things to pursue in themselves, they are not the most important thing. None of these things will last forever. As the beggar found, if you have the son, you have everything. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. For us as Christians, if you have the son of God, you have everything. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. It is him who will sustain you in a way that nothing else will. It is through him that you have life and you have it to the full. Year 12, let me tell each one of you are made in the image of God. Each one of you is completely unique. If they could pull out all the information that is in your DNA, it would make up 3.1%. 3.1 billion, billion bits of information. You have a distinctive value and splendour that is in each one of you. As the psalmist said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of him? Nelson Mandela made famous these words, and I like to use them at this assembly. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. Kids, get your priorities right. Yesterday, I spoke to a doctor who'd graduated uh, from Corinna in 2008, and she said her advice for kids was, make sure your value is never in terms of the mark that you get, and it should never define you. We hope you do well in the HSC, but don't let your mark define what you are going to do. Year 12, you are amazing. Sharing morning teas with you this term has just confirmed that to me. And on behalf of all the staff that have taught you, some for many years, we wish you all the best as you prepare for the HSC and life afterwards. Parents, we thank you for trusting us with the education of your children, and especially those who have their last child coming through with us. For some, it has been a difficult journey. There's been some tears along the way, but it's been so worthwhile, and we deeply appreciate it. Good luck, Year 12, and thank you. Thanks, Mr Jones. Well, it's come to that time. Normally, Kindy runs the show at this point of time in the assembly. So Mr Jones has very big shoes to fill, but if anyone can do it, he can. To help him out, we did get Kindy to ask the Year 12 students one question in a video. Here is the question. Ready, set, go. 
So, what are you going to do when you leave school? Uh, Year 12, uh, Miss Porter's going to read out your name. You're going to receive a gift from Mr Jones. And uh, then you're going to tell us what you're going to do next year. Josh Attard. Um, So next year I'm looking at moving away and further studying German uh, at the University of Newcastle. Thanks, Josh. They're also getting a photo at the same time, parents, if you didn't know what that lag was. (laughs) Hannah Beeman. Um, Next year I'll have a gap year and then, God willing, study law at university. Anna Bevan. Um, Next year I'll have a gap year and work on my art, then hopefully go to uni. Chloe Bridge. Um, I plan to work with my dad in upholstery and motor trimming and then decide at the end of the year whether I'll go to TAFE for that. Sophie Button. Um, I'm hoping to go straight to uni and study primary education. Adam Carpenter. Uh, I plan to go to TAFE and study information technology. Lillian Chin. Uh, I plan to study law at the University of Sydney or UNSW. Archie Crofts. Uh, I continue my apprenticeship with a builder. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Takara Delmage. Uh, next year, go to uni and study Indigenous health. Lily Douglas. I plan to go to Queensland next year and then study Cert 5 degree for vet nursing at TAFE. Leah Downs. Um, I hope to take a gap year next year and do snow ski instructing and then head to uni after that. Bella Early. Um, Hopefully go straight to uni and study a Bachelor of Business or Bachelor of Creative Industries. Hayden Fawkes. Sorry, Aidan's busted his ankle. This is taking quite some time. (laughs) Uh, Next year, I plan to study mechatronics engineering at UNSW. Fiona Field. Um, I plan to study at TAFE, early childhood education. Ella Fotheringham. (laughs) 
Uh, next year, I hope to study a Bachelor of Biotechnology and Medical Science at UNSW. Sapora Gogos. Um, I plan on going to Townsville's YWAM and become a missionary. Hannah Griffiths. Um, I plan to become a humanitarian engineer and do full-time mission work. Tia Halley. Uh, next year, I plan to go to uni and study a Bachelor of Social Work. Shakira Hurst. Um, my plans are to go to uni and become an ag teacher. <laughs> Maddie Keys. Um, I plan on completing my Cert 3 in hairdressing and seeing where God takes me after that. Reese Kentwell. I plan to go to uni and study social work. Isaac Learson. Um, I plan on going to university to study med at Newcastle and then hopefully do further study to become an orthopaedic surgeon. Robbie Mayer. I plan on going to uni next year and studying construction management. Mitch McCauley. Uh, I plan to go to uni and study a Bachelor of uh, Canning and Finance. Aaron Moore. I plan on going to uni next year and going into medicine and then hopefully becoming a doctor. B. Morrison. Uh, I plan to go to UNE to do a Bachelor of Agriculture and Business. John A. Morrison. Uh, I plan to go to Sydney to pursue my rugby career, yeah. Josh Murray. Uh, I'm hoping to get an apprenticeship to be a Sparky. <laughs> Tim Nolan. Um, I'll have a gap year and then work things out from there. Hannah O'Reilly. I'm planning to go to uni and study nursing. 
Gemma Orga. Um, I plan to go to Sydney to study communication design at Billy Blue Design College. <laughs> Jess Reed. Uh, I plan to go to uni next year to, start to study criminal psychology or clinical psychology. Felicity Roach. Uh, I plan to take a couple of years working and then go to Scotland and do a course in outdoor leadership. Tom Serangelo. Um, sorry, <laughs> so nervous. Um, I want to <laughs> just uh, study um, international relations and probably Japanese or Indonesian at Newcastle and then travel overseas after that. Just God bless. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Emma Sheaves unfortunately couldn't be here today. Shakira Simpson. Um, I'm going to take a gap year and to work for money to pay for my TAFE course for the next year, which is a beautician course. Maddie Singh. Um, I plan to take a gap year and then go to university to study midwifery or social work. Amy Spikestra. Um, I plan on taking a gap year and then hopefully going to uni to do a Bachelor of Communications. Georgia Vandergaff. Um, God willing, I'm hoping to do either a gap year with the Defence Force in the Air Force um, or do a Bachelor of Physiotherapy at Newcastle. Campbell Wilkie. Um, I plan to take a gap year, then join the Defence Force in the Army. Chelsea Willey. Um, God willing, I plan to um, commence either a Bachelor of Business or Accounting and work full or part time. Thank you. Josie Worth. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even, uh, maybe go to Newcastle or take art somewhere, it sounds good. Maybe be a pirate. Heather Wits. <laughs> I'm hoping to study midwifery. Katisha Wood. Um, 
Um, I'm hoping to go to TAFE to study um, child care. Liam Woods. Uh, I'm planning to take a gap year and then hopefully study Bachelor of Arts or Social Work. So. Well, thank you, Year 12. Uh, normally everyone would clap right now. Uh, I guess you could clap yourselves. <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, Gemma Ortega and Mr Hutchison to close the assembly in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessing of education. A stable, supportive and nurturing school culture can be so easy to take for granted, but I thank you for the years each of us has spent at Karinia. Lord, we thank you for each and every one of the staff here who work tirelessly to support us in the school, um, and I praise you especially for our fantastic teachers. This year has brought a, brought a lot of new challenges, but through everything they have been so faithful as we have all navigated a whole new way of learning from home. Lord, each of us are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, and I thank you that we are blessed to live in a country where we have access to quality learning. It is such a joy to learn more and more about the incredibly intricate world you have made for us and that you sustain. As we go now into a period of intense study and exams, I pray you would give us strength to persist and work faithfully to the end, glorifying you in everything we do. Leaving the security of school and starting a new chapter of our lives as independent adults is nerve-wracking and exciting all at once. I pray that through the ups and downs that are to come, that we would remember that you are sovereign and in complete control. I pray that we would find comfort and rest in your secure, loving hand. Lord, the gift of your son Jesus, who gave up his life for us broken sinners, is incredible. Through all the temptations and empty promises this world tries to snare us with, may we always seek you and your glory first. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen. O Lord, our God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment and stretching out the heavens like a tent. You control the large and the small, growing stars as well as bringing forth flowers in spring. Lord God, nothing is too big that you do not control it, or too small that it is beneath your notice and sovereign power. Father God, in a year that has been so uncertain, we know that you are unchanging, that you continue to work out your plan even in the midst of the unpredictability of these times. We praise you that many of the students have been able to know through personal experience this year that you are a strong, a reliable, and a faithful God. Lord God, we thank you that these Year 12 students have been able to get to this stage of their schooling. We thank you for helping them to impact upon each other in positive ways as they have developed friendships, looked out for each other, and learnt to accept each other. We thank you for the manner in which they have so often conducted themselves, showing maturity and integrity in numerous situations. We thank you for the relationships that you have helped them build with staff and younger students. And as these Year 12 students prepare for their HSC exams, we ask that you might help them to be faithful and diligent, using the skills and abilities that you have given them in a way which brings honour to you. And as they stand poised to embark upon a new stage in their lives, we ask that they might know that you reign beyond the walls of Carinia, that no matter what path they now follow through life, that they are not beyond your loving reach and your sovereign claim. We ask, Lord God, that you might help them to walk with integrity of heart, that they might be young men and women who know and follow you as their king, who hold fast to the truth. Heavenly Father, these things we ask so that in everything you might be seen to be glorious, righteous, and the one who reigns supreme over all. Amen.
Well, Year 12, uh, you will certainly be missed by all of us. And I've got one last chance to speak to you all. And I know there's been a lot of quotes this morning, but I'm going to leave you with one more. It's a quote from Abraham Kuyper. He said, There is not one square inch in the whole world over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not cry, This is mine. Not one square inch. Year 12, you were made by Jesus and you were made for him. As you move into the future, please put him at the centre of the things that you do. Thank you. Oh,